All right, so I guess we'll get started. Uh, the chair's not here, so I'm just going to like step in until he gets here. Um, so we're just going to kind of go with this, right? So first speaker is Sean Cavanaugh. Uh, go for it, Sean. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, firstly, I'd like to thank everyone for showing up this morning. I know myself how hard it can be uh, these early mornings, so I do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, my name is Sean Cavanaugh, and Today I'm going to talk about DOPE, which is essentially this uh, Python toolkit for defect supercell calculations um, that I've built along with some other people in London over the course of my PhD. Okay, so uh, DOPE is quite a comprehensive uh, defect modeling package with a wide range of functionality, um, but obviously I'm quite constrained for time this morning and I definitely don't have time to talk about uh, all that different functionality. So I would please ask that if you're in any way interested in this package or in doing these defect supercell calculations, do you check out our documentation website where we have uh, a wide range of tutorials, extensive documentation, tips and tricks for doing these sort of calculations. Um, and you can also see the JOST paper here, which kind of gives a, a summary of this functionality as well. Um, and most of what I'm going to show today are essentially just screenshots from this website just to give a flavor of some of the functionality that we have in this package. Okay. So I assume most people in this room are um, probably somewhat familiar with the typical defect simulation workflow, uh, which is typically using the so-called supercell approach. Um, just to give a kind of overview of what we typically do is we start by generating our defects and competing phases that we need to determine our chemical potential limits. Uh, we, we go on to perform and process these total energy calculations for these structures before then determining the relevant terms in our formation energy equation, um, and then finally analyzing the thermodynamics of our defects and other specific properties of interest. Um, so this is the core functionality of DOPE, essentially implementing each of these stages and more of the defect simulation workflow in an efficient and user-friendly manner, um, as well as offering a, a range of more advanced analysis tools along the way. Okay. So just worth briefly mentioning um, is the design philosophy of DOPE, which has essentially been to try and incorporate a wide range of functionality, a lot of which has been driven by the wide range of applications that our users have been focused on. So from narrow gap semiconductors for solar cells and thermoelectrics, up to wide gap insulators for power electronics, batteries, um, as well as in between phosphors, radiation detectors and transparent conductors. Um, we've built it to have a set of reasonable defaults that work for the vast majority of cases out of the box, but also with full control and flexibility for the user to fine tune to their specific case. Um, we've tried to make it as user friendly as possible with extensive tutorials and documentation, automated compatibility and sanity checks. Uh, we want to aid and encourage reproducibility, so I'll mention a little bit about that later, um, as well as trying to uh, achieve a certain level of computational efficiency through some intelligent algorithms uh, and publication ready outputs. Okay, so if we kind of start uh, at step one, let's briefly look at how these uh, are integrated and doped. So for step one, we can provide our host crystal structure to dope, and then it'll automatically determine all possible symmetry in equivalent defect sites for that material, as well as the corresponding uh, symmetry information. Um, for the supercell, by default, DOPED will try to generate an optimal supercell uh, matching a set of controllable constraints, such as the minimum image distance and minimum number of atoms, um, or alternatively, you can provide a supercell if you have a certain reason for using um, a specific one. Uh, and just to give a kind of flavor of the range of different options that are available with these functions, um, some of which are shown here, um, as I mentioned, it really is fully flexible and customizable to whatever sort of um, setup you want to use for your investigation. Okay, so I mentioned that DOPED can automatically generate this optimal supercell um, for a given input crystal structure. So in general, when thinking about the supercell we want to use for a defect investigation, our typical goal is that we want to maximize the image distance of uh, yeah, periodic images of our charged defect in these supercells for the minimum number of atoms or electrons in our supercell, or essentially for the minimum computational cost. Um, mathematically, this is known as the shortest vector problem, and there's actually no general analytical solution and typically has to be solved either numerically or through some approximate means. Um, so in DOPED, I've implemented this kind of efficient and direct optimization of this minimum image distance by scanning over all possible supercell transformations in this kind of efficient scanning way um, and account, accounting for uh, symmetry invariances. 
Um, if we compare it to some other functions that are available in the literature from either PyMatchN or ASE, um, we can see that we're getting a, quite a significant improvement in the minimum image distance we're obtaining for a given number of unit cells. And I would note that the ASE functions here are not um, exactly very user friendly and they kind of require a custom implementation of scanning over multiple uh, possible inputs to then find the, and multiple possible targets to then find the best output um, for these. So if we average this over a range of different uh, crystal systems, as is done here, we're getting mean improvement compared to this custom ASE scans of around 10%, um, which in DFT costs would translate to somewhere around 35%, um, which is a significant improvement in the efficiency of this is for every uh, supercell calculation that you're doing in your um, defect investigation. Um, so, in general, defects can adopt various charge states in materials, most notably in semiconductors and insulators. Um, and so, at the beginning of our defect investigation, we typically need to choose a range of potential charge states to calculate, um, as shown here in this kind of default output from DOPED. Um, in this way, we can think about false positives, which are uh, charge states that we included in our calculation set and calculated, but ended up not being stable, and so in theory didn't need to be calculated uh, or essentially are wasted calculations, while false negatives would be uh, charge states that we didn't include but actually are stable, um, which is quite bad, of course, because we could be missing out on important behavior. So there are, there are again some methods in the literature for trying to uh, estimate or these reasonable charge state ranges, mainly based on oxidation states. Um, so we've built on these approaches um, to also incorporate and featureize um, both oxidation state probabilities from the ICSD as well as oxidation and charge state. Again, we're getting a yeah, significant enough improvement um, in our um, yeah, percentage of false positives and again trying to uh, improve the efficiency of our overall defect investigation. Okay, um, so I won't say much about step two. Um, again, please check out the code if you're interested in it. Just to say that we have uh, a lot of different useful features for kind of trying to automate this as much as possible, but again, with full control for the user. Um, so please do check that part out if you're interested. Um, okay, so just some quick points to mention about step three, um, finite size charge correction. So these are one of the key components in our defect formation energies for charged defect supercells. Um, and DOPED automatically computes two of the most common approaches currently in the field, which is the Fraser-Alter FNV isotropic charge correction, as well as the kumagai oba uh, EFNV uh, charge correction for anisotropic systems. Um, where these plots are automatically generated, can be easily queried. Uh, it also automatically estimates the error in your charge correction energy based on this variance in the sampling region. So to give you um, an estimate of this error and maybe flagging cases where you might want to increase your supercell size to achieve a certain uh, desired precision for your formation energies. Um, of course, defect formation energy diagrams, so these plots here, are essentially one of the key outputs of uh, most defect investigations computationally, um, and so DOPED obviously fully supports this with a wide range um, and non-exhaustive list here of different ways that these can be customized and plotted uh, for your specific case, um, yeah, and to analyze the behavior uh, in your material. Okay, so lastly, just some notes on some of the further thermodynamic analysis functions that are built into DOPED. Um, so firstly, in DOPED, it automatically determines your relaxed point symmetry, which is actually a bit harder than it sounds. Um, and from this, the corresponding orientational and spin degeneracy factors for your defects. Uh, so these co contribute to this G uh, degeneracy factor preterm or prefactor in your um, defect concentration equation uh, and are actually quite important. Some they're off uh, every now and again neglected in the literature, um, but they can make over two orders of magnitude difference in your predicted concentrations, and so they're really important to include. Um, with this, we can rapidly scan through chemical potential and temperature space, kind of an example of which is shown here. Um, and you can calculate your equilibrium and non-equilibrium Fermi level, defect and carrier concentrations, etc. Um, it also natively supports temperature-dependent electronic structure and or chemical potentials. So for example, if you have a gaseous competing phase, that can be quite important, um, as well as a range of other uh, analysis functions shown here. Uh, and just to illustrate some of the type of diagrams you can generate with DOPED, these kind of Brouwer type diagrams of your Fermi level and um, defect and carrier concentrations as a function of chemical potential, uh, etc. 
Okay, so lastly, just a note on reproducibility. Um, so all stages of the workflow in DOPED um, can be easily output, and in fact, automatically are output to JSON files, which are these small files but contain all the necessary information to reproduce um, each stage of the workflow. So showing all the different contributions to terms like formation energies, um, charge corrections, etc. Um, we also have a number of these tabulation functions that automatically uh, output these tables that kind of show different contributions against your formation energies and charge corrections, so it can be easily uh, put in the SI of a paper just to uh, aid interpretability and reproducibility. Um, and lastly, its Python framework makes it quite plug and play with a variety of other advanced analysis defect codes. So ones that uh, can be used for electron hole recombination, high throughput uh, calculations, defect structure searching, etc. Okay, so with that, I'll wrap up. Um, this work was done during the course of my PhD, so I'd like to thank my supervisors, David Scanlon and Aaron Walsh, um, as well as all of our uh, contributors to DOPE over the years, um, as well as funding for my current position, which is postdoc with Boris Kaczynski at Harvard that I just started um, last week. And so, yeah, if you're interested in this code, uh, I would ask you to please check out the documentation, have a look at our JOST paper, uh, and thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, uh, great question. So, um, a combination of different things. Uh, I mean, at the start of my PhD, I was doing these defect investigations, and I yeah, I went and had a look at what was out there. Uh, and there were some quite good tools out there at the time. So there's PyCDT from um, Danny Broberg et al. Um, that was quite useful, but it was quite tailored to certain things. So that was kind of more built for high throughput calculations, GGA, so this stuff. And so it had some nice tools, but not everything that I kind of yeah, wanted to do my analysis, certainly not like some of this thermodynamic analysis or symmetry as well. So it was kind of trying to take some of those methods, but then build something that kind of did what I and others in my oh, re, um, the two research groups I was in during my PhD wanted to do. And then it kind of ended up in this, yeah, kind of all encompassing package. Dynamical stability conditions and, mm -hmm. and compare. But can you do uh, com competing phases calculations and things like that? Yeah, exactly. I mean, oops, sorry, let's stop this thing. Um, yeah, so I, this is again something I didn't have time to mention, but yeah, we uh, fully support doing these uh, chemical potentials or competing phases calculations. Um, this is actually one again where we've kind of tried to build in some sort of smart algorithm for how you choose what competing phases to calculate based on uh, the certain kind of error tolerance when scanning uh, databases like the materials project. And then yeah, all the analysis, plotting of the stability regions, um, you're going to do this grid interpolation to uh, essentially if you have, want to like optimize doping, for example, over a uh, multi-dimensional chemical potential space that's all um, yeah, incorporated. One quick question. Okay. Uh, when you do charge corrections, uh, do you only do FNV corrections, right? Um, no longer zanger. Do you mean as in as opposed to band filling corrections or which the other charge ones? corrections? Yeah, so FNV or EFNV, so Kumagai Opa as well. Are you doing it with the same protocol done with SX defect align? So yeah, yeah, I've benchmarked against SS right. defect align exactly. Yeah. And then you should stop it in 30 seconds. 